TypeScript has two ways of declaring structures of your objects in the form of type aliases and interfaces. In this lesson, we will look at the technical differences between the two, when you should use which, along with real-world code analysis and community thoughts, so let's go. First, let's cover the similar features offered by both that will be used in almost 80% of your code base. Let's start with interfaces. The most common use case of type definitions in TypeScript is to declare the structure of a type. For example, say we have a point in two-dimensional space. Now, if we want to represent a point in three-dimensional space, we can do that with an interface quite easily by using the extends keyword to add to the existing point2d interface. In terms of usages of such an interface, we can use it to enforce the structure of any old variables in our code base. Similarly, we can use such an interface to enforce the structure of classes in our code base using the implements keyword. And as a demonstration of the kind of code safety and error analysis provided by using this type, if you forget a member in the variable declaration, we get a nice error that Z is missing. Similarly, if you forget to add a member to the class, we will get an error that Z is missing. Now, all of these features are also provided by type aliases in TypeScript. For example, we can declare a type for our 2D point with the X and Y properties and we can use the type intersection to add an additional property z for our point 3D type. And now in terms of usage, these types are exactly the same as the ones we saw in interfaces. We can use our type to enforce structure for variables in our code base, and we can use this type with the implements keyword to enforce structure for classes. And these types also behave the same in terms of code safety and error analysis. So if we forget a member in the point variable, we get a nice error that z is missing. And similarly, if you forget a member in the class that implements this type, we will get an error for our missing member. That's it for the similarity, and you can see that in most cases, you don't need to pick one or the other. Now let's focus on what you can do in one option that isn't supported by the other option. One key reason that you might want to use interfaces is that if you are going to be creating structural hierarchies, extends with interfaces might feel more natural and comfortable to you than using intersection types. This however is not a technical limitation as we have already seen. Now the second reason is a feature that is only supported by interfaces called declaration merging. An example use case of that would be something like the Node.js framework called Express. The base request type supported by Express has a few properties, for example, the body property. And you can have a function that handles that request, and you can see that you have access to the body property on the request object. Declaration merging allows a middleware, for example, a JSON middleware, to add additional properties to the request interface. TypeScript is going to merge the two declarations of the interface into a single type that has both of these properties. So in your code, simply by importing the JSON middleware, you will get access to the JSON property on instances of the request interface. Declaration merging is the key reason to use interfaces. And if you are working with an API that requires such seamless structural extension, you will have to use interfaces. Now let's look at what makes type aliases different. A good example of type aliases is the kind of props that are common to components in front-end libraries. The key feature of type aliases is that anything you can put in a type position, you can put in a type alias. In fact, TypeScript even offers a refactoring that takes something in a type position and extracts it out to a type alias. So if you wanted, you could break out the onChange handler into a named type. Similarly, you can create an alias from primitive types like string and then reuse it in the change handler and even use a type alias for the union of the text and the email string literals. Notice this shorthand way of declaring the type of a function with type aliases. You can declare function signatures with interfaces as well, but the signature will not be as neat. Additionally, interfaces have no way of aliasing primitive types, so the type alias is your only option. Also, if you want to use unions, they are only supported by type aliases. Additionally, there are other advanced features like conditional types that are only supported by type aliases. And if you are not familiar with conditional types or type functions, I do have a separate lesson on that that I will link to in the video description. 
So now that you understand the technical differences between the two, let's discuss the mental models you can follow to ensure consistency in your code base. On the left we have features that are only supported by type aliases and on the right we have features that are only supported by interfaces. So if you want any of these features, the choice will be made for you. But what about the common ground? My default stance is that I use types unless I need interfaces for a particular reason as shown on screen. Now some teams use an interface first approach mostly because of their familiarity with other programming languages and then use type aliases only for the reasons shown on screen. So in short, for the common ground, your best bet is to have a team vote after you understand the differences. Now I've also written some code that analyzes big code bases from Microsoft to see what they are using. This code uses cloned copies of the TypeScript compiler, VS Code and Fluent UI and then spits out the instances of type aliases, interfaces and classes. I will leave a link to this code in the description and you can run it against your code base as well if it will help you make your choice. Now for the code bases under test here, the TypeScript team seems to have a preference for interfaces mostly because of the deep type hierarchy that exists when working with abstract syntax trees. The VS Code codebase makes heavy use of inversion of control and that is represented by the close correlation of interfaces and classes. And finally, Fluent UI also has a preference for interfaces. I'm not that familiar with that codebase, but I thought it was a fun project to add to the mix. Now I also posted a poll up on Twitter to gather people's preferences and people do have a preference for one or the other, but interfaces definitely seem to be the popular choice. So in summary, use what feels more natural to you and use the technical differences you've seen to help you make your choice. And that's all for this lesson on types versus interfaces. Smash that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.